The goal of the command pattern is to encapsulate an action within an object. And this kind of goes against the grain of object-oriented programming, because object-oriented programming revolves around the object. An object is typically a noun. It's a person, a place, or a thing. And the command pattern seeks to use an object as a verb. But the idea behind the command pattern is sound. It gives us the ability to separate the responsibility of issuing a command from anything that is executing the command. And this separation allows us to write a clean and flexible API. For example, I've written a simple calculator data type. It has a single property called underscore current value. The underscore denotes that this is quote unquote private and it's initialized as zero. And then there are three methods. There's an add method, subtract, and get current value. Now focusing on the add and subtract methods, they both have a single parameter. It's a value that we are going to either add to the current value or subtract from the current value. And technically there's nothing wrong with this code. It's one, simple, and two, it works. And it's hard to argue with those two facts. But this calculator data type is somewhat brittle. We only have two methods to perform arithmetic. We, of course, want to add methods for multiplication and division. We might also want to factor in exponents and things like that. So our API is going to change, and anything using a calculator object is going to have to change as well. It would be much more simple if we had just one method called execute, and it would simply execute a command and a command would represent an addition command or a subtraction command or so on and so forth. So inside of this execute method, we would first of all execute this particular command, which would then set a new value for our current value property. So we would want to take that command and then we would want to execute that as well. And of course, for just about every arithmetic operation, we need two values. The first value is our current value, so we could pass that to the commands execute method. And then we need the second value, the one that's represented by the command. So let's say that this is an addition command. We want to take the current value and add it by one. That value of one could be represented by the command's value property. And even then, we don't need to specify the command's value because the value is already a part of the command. So all we really need to pass is the calculator's current value. And by taking this approach, we have now separated the issuing of the command from the execution of the command. The calculator now has nothing to do with addition, subtraction, multiplication, or any other arithmetic operation. All it knows is that it gets a command and it executes that command, passing in the calculator's current value. So now let's create a command object. We're going to start with just a simple command. We're not really going to create one of these basic commands. So you can think of this as an abstract object. We need two things here. We first of all need to know the function that we want to execute whenever the command is executed. And then we need the value that we are going to either add or subtract or so on and so forth from the calculator's current value. And then this is going to have two properties. It's going to have an execute property, which is set to our function. And then we will have the value property, which is set to our value. And by using this base command, we can then create an add command for adding numbers together. All we need here is the value that we want to add to our current value in the calculator. Because inside of this constructor, we are going to call the command function with the call method. We'll pass in this. We need a function to perform the addition. So we will pass an anonymous function that returns value plus this dot value. And then we need to pass the third argument to the call method, which is the value. Now let's create a calculator object. I'm just going to call it calc and we'll new up calculator. And let's go to the browser and let's perform some addition. So we have our calculator. We want to execute and add command. So we will new up add command and let's just add by 19. This should give us a value of 19 in our calculator. And let's once again add something to our calculator, but let's just add the value of one. That should give us the current value of 20. Now let's create another command because that's all that we need to do in order to perform more arithmetic. And let's just call this subtract command or sub command for short. So I'll copy and paste the add command, change the name to sub command, 
and I will change the operator inside of our function. Let's go back to the browser. We already have our calculator object, so let's go ahead and let's add 19 once again. But now let's subtract 4 from this. So we will execute a new subcommand. We'll pass in the value of 4, and that should now give us a current value of 15. And now that our actions are encapsulated by objects, we can actually do something else with those objects. We can keep track of them, and we can add an undo feature to our calculator. So let's go back to our code. Now we're going to have to refactor our commands somewhat, because we need to keep track of what is a quote-unquote undo operation for a given command. So instead of using anonymous functions whenever we create a new command, let's just break this out and let's create an actual function for those types of commands. And this is really the best practice anyway, because we don't want to recreate those functions over and over again. We just want to reuse just one function. So let's create a function called add, where we are still going to accept a single value and we will still use the this keyword because we still want to make a reference to our value property whenever we use this add function as the execute method within our command. Let's also go ahead and break out the subtraction method, which I'll just go ahead and name as sub. And then when we create the sub command, we will pass the sub function. Now let's add another parameter to our command function. And it makes sense to do so after our function parameter because we want one called undo. So the first parameter is going to be our execute function. The second is going to be our undo function. And then finally we will have our value. We will add a new property to our command called undo. And we will simply set that to our undo parameter. And when we create an add command, we want to use the sub function as the undo function. And for our sub command, we want to use the add function as our undo function. But of course we need the ability to undo from the calculator. So let's add an undo method. We don't need any parameters and instead we want to get the last command that was used. Now we need to keep track of the commands. So let's add another property to our calculator called commands and it will simply be an array. So whenever we execute a command, we will add that command to our commands array. So commands.push and then pass in command. And then when we want to undo, we will use the pop method. So var cmd, short for command, equals this.commands.pop. And then we will call command.undo. And we will need to pass in the current value. So this dot underscore current value. So let's head back to the browser and let's test this new functionality. Let's add by 19 once again and let's get the current value. We have the value of 19. Now let's call calc undo. That should get the last command and undo it. Let's get the current value once again and we've got 19 so we've got a problem. Let's go back to the code and let's look at the undo method. We get the command, we call undo, although we aren't setting a new value for the current value. So let's just do that. Let's go back to the browser, refresh, let's perform the last operations, add by 19. We know that that works, so let's just call the undo method, calc.undo. And now whenever we get the current value, we should see the value of zero. So by using the command pattern, we were able to separate the issuing of the command from executing the command. And that gave us a lot of flexibility because then we could add more functionality to our calculator by simply adding new command types. But that's not all. Because we were encapsulating an action within an object, we actually had something that we could work with, which once again allowed us to add more functionality to our application.